Now let's talk about the prostate. The prostate is an apple or really heart-shaped gland that's the size of a little chestnut. And it helps reduce the milky and alkaline solution to keep the sperm alive and aid with the sperm motility. Now it should feel non-tender and even rubbery when doing a digital rectal exam with the finger there. And it almost feels like a hard-boiled egg. Now it grows and enlarges with BPH. So that's why I say BPH is just a big prostate with B and P. Now 50% of men by age of 50 have enlarged prostates due to age-related hormonal changes. Now in terms of the location, it's anterior to the rectum and surrounding urethra. Now when it gets enlarged, it kinks the urethra and kind of shuts off urine flow. So think about a kinking straw. We're just cutting off supply. And we mainly see urinary signs and symptoms due to this. For example, frequency in terms of urination, urgency or nocturia, that frequency during the night. And we typically ask our clients, in terms of frequency, a few subjective questions, like how often do you go to the bathroom? Or even urgency, do you feel like you can't wait to urinate? And for nocturia or nocturia, how many times are you getting up at night to go to the restroom? Now, clients also present with hesitancy. For example, trouble starting a stream. And this has to do with that big prostate with BPH just cutting off that urinary supply, that urethra. Because if you really think about it, it's just like a straw, right? It's getting kinked with all that pressure, not allowing that urine to pass through. So this results in dribbling due to the overfilling of the bladder, it's being retained, and we have this leaky full bladder. Now we can use the acronym NUTS. <laughs> N is for nocturia or nocturia, U is for urgency, urinary dribbles, and urinary frequency. T is for the client tries to void, but they can't, hesitancy, as well as S in NUTS for small urine stream. Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Did you get your beautifully handcrafted study guide bundle yet? It highlights the key points and memory tricks in this video. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, all neatly organized in the playlist. Along with thousands of practice questions written by actual NCLEX writers. So don't be scared, be prepared. Try it free today. Visit SimpleNursing.com. To check the prostate, we do a digital rectal exam. We start doing digital rectal exams at the age of 30, typically, if there's no other indications. To do this, we position the patient in a left sideline position, and using a gloved hand, you would palpate the anus and insert a finger into the rectum to try to palpate that prostate. That left lateral position allows for adequate inspection and palpation of the anus, rectum, and prostate in men, and it's usually more comfortable for the client. When we locate the prostate, we will press into the gland to notice if there's any nodules or masses. The prostate should not protrude greater than one centimeter into the rectum, and it should feel smooth with a little bit of a central groove and be non-tender as well as a little bit rubbery. It's roughly the size of a chestnut, about two to five centimeters. However, it can get enlarged with clients as they age. For prostate cancer screening, we typically start this at age 45 if the men are at high risk, if they're African American, or if they have a first degree family relative with history of an enlarged prostate or prostate cancer. So when this is the case, we will do a digital rectal exam to see if that prostate's enlarged, which again, usually happens as a client gets older. If it is enlarged, then we will draw a PSA. So this PSA level, that stands for a prostate specific antigen. So P for prostate, S for specific, and then antigen. So we draw that to see if it's high. If it's high, that would lead us to believe that we should do a biopsy. That biopsy will tell us if that enlarged prostate is BPH, which is not cancerous. Mm -hmm. The B in BPH stands for benign, so not cancerous, or if it's prostate cancer, and more of a concern. With that PSA, the prostate specific antigen, there's kind of a gray area with it. There's not a clear indication of what number is normal versus abnormal. Someone could have a PSA that's nine mm -hmm. and that might be their normal mm -hmm. or that might be high. Oftentimes what we do is we'll take the PSA and then compare it over a period of time. 
if it's increasing, then that's a sign of concern. Or if it starts out very high, then that's going to be a sign of concern as well. So the big issue with the PSA, it helps us to guide if we're going to do a biopsy and look at those cells, which the biopsy is done rectally, so it's kind of invasive. Mm. However, there's no clear indication on it. And so most studies indicate that values less than four are normal and okay and no biopsy is needed. So oftentimes we call that a watch and wait PSA, where we keep taking those PSAs over time to see if it elevates more. All right, now let's cover BPH versus prostate cancer. Let's play that video right now. BPH, benign prostate hyperplasia, is prostate enlargement which compresses the urethra and surrounding bladder, making it difficult to urinate. Most common in males over 50 years old. Now the memory trick, just think BPH, a big prostate that holds back urine. Naturally, the signs and symptoms include urinary retention leading to a UTI infection, which is a priority complication. Now the key terms to know is sensations of incomplete emptying, described as keywords, clients feel the need to urinate again immediately after urinating, and urinary frequency and nocturia, having to urinate especially during the night, described as a need to awake at night with an urge to urinate as well as straining to void or difficulty initiating urination, described as a strain to begin a stream of urine, and a weak stream with slow dribbling of urine after voiding, described as keywords, stream of urine that is weak or intermittent, and low back pain as mentioned by Kaplan. Now these keywords listed here love to show up on select all that apply questions, so be sure to write them down and don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Frequency of sex is not related to BPH. Many students get this wrong. Now for complications, as mentioned before, that are not normal. The big key one here is a UTI infection. Write that down. So burning sensation with urination or even cloudy or smelly urine. This is priority. It indicates an infection from urinary retention. So the first priority here is to follow up with these findings and assess further. Now for prostate cancer. This is cancer of the prostate affecting only males. The tumor grows right here under the bladder in front of the rectum area within the prostate. So for risk factors, for prostate cancer, it increases with older age, over 50. African American men have a higher propensity of prostate cancer, as well as a family history of prostate cancer and a diet high in red meats. These are typically the most tested risk factors. Now for signs and symptoms, we see anemia that shows pale skin, also called pelor, a low blood count that leads to pale skin, basically decreased perfusion, as well as general weakness and fatigue. Now a big one here that I would write down is difficult and painful urination. Big NCLEX tip. This occurs if cancer compresses the urethra or bladder. Now, if the cancer becomes metastatic, it can spread to the bones, like the vertebra or pelvis, in the hip or lower back area, typically in the later signs of the cancer. So, Hesse mentions, a patient comes to the clinic complaining of general weakness, difficulty urinating, fatigue, and pallor that began a week ago. Laboratory results show anemia. Which question should the nurse ask next? When was your last prostate examination? And a second question, diagnosed with stage 4 prostate cancer, the nurse knows which characteristic describes this type of cancer. Widespread metastasis, fancy words for the cancer is spread. 